Right, camera gear. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you have just clicked on this video because you are interested in camera gear, then my name's Lou and I am one part of Camper Vibe, Emily being the other half. She is very busy upstairs working. So to all the regulars, I'm really sorry, she's probably not going to be in this video. Um, but don't worry, normal service will re be resumed on Sunday uh, when she'll be back with all her usual silliness. Um, anyway, so I've been promising this video for a while uh, and I've put off filming it. Uh, the main reason being really because I've never done a video where it's just me talking to the camera. Um, obviously I've done the build videos, uh, there was a lot of talking but I was doing things so a bit nervous about this one but I'll give it a crack and see how it goes. Um, but yeah, so don't be daunted by all of this. This is the vlogging kit and my photography kit or some of my photography kit. Some of it is still trapped in our van in Spain but that's a whole other story. Um, so I'm going to go through the cameras as quickly but as informatively as I can uh, without dribbling on too much because I do have a tendency to do that. Um, so I have written myself some handy notes so we have to try and refer to those so I'm not being rude I'm just making sure that I cover everything that I think you guys are going to want to know and I'm assuming most of you are sort of early days or just starting out so it'll be based around the basics this is not going to be technically massively advanced it's just we get so many questions now almost daily about what we're using so yeah I'm just going to quickly smash through it and I'm already dribbling on as you can tell so I'm just going to get started. Um, but I have got coffee, so. Yeah, sorry guys, I've got two cameras on and I didn't know if I'd hit record on that one, so there's another little camera down here somewhere. Uh, that should be recorded, hopefully. Um, apologies for the setup and the light, and uh, I'm having to use Emily's phone so I can show you all of our cameras. Um, I'm, be, be aware, be very aware that we're not professionals. We've only been doing this for a very short period of time. Um, so we're just gonna give you a few tips on what we've got. Uh, that's it really. Right, so I'll just clear us a bit of space. Um, so the first camera I want to talk about is the Osmo Pocket, the DJI Osmo Pocket. Now, this little thing, uh, we use it for nearly all of our A-roll and a lot of our B-roll. So by A-roll I mean like uh, talking to the camera pieces, so uh, talking headshots, face shots, whatever you want to call them. Uh, we often use this. It's fantastic, it's got a, a built-in gimbal, so as I turn it on, that little thing moving around, that is the gimbal, so it means it's stabilised. So rather than just sort of like jolty camera movements, it smooths out the movements for you. And it's fantastic because it means there's a lot of things you can do with it. And one of the biggest pros of this camera is the fact that it's got a gimbal and it's got that stabilization. Um, so we're just checking the list. But the second pro with this thing is its size. It is just so uh, tiny. You can literally, they call it the pocket for a reason because you can just put it in its case and pop it in your pocket. Um, so if you are out, we do a lot of, well, we're hoping to do more travel uh, vlogs in the future. So. When you're hiking and you you don't want to be coming to carry all this, it's just ridiculous. So it is handy. You can just chuck it in your pocket and off you go. Uh, the second pro for us is mm -hmm. it's multi-purpose. So it does that sometimes. Uh, yeah, the second pro is it's multi-purpose. So we can use it for our A roll and we can use it for our B roll because of that gimbal um, is fantastic for like follow shots and it has all these settings, follow modes and everything like that. So it's a fantastic camera for B roll for a beginner anyway. Um, yeah, but it does have its cons. Uh, the first con is the built-in audio. I find the built-in audio quite... It's great if you're just talking to the camera or if you're holding it and filming what's in front of you because the camera, uh, sorry, the mic is situated just down there. Um, so when you're holding it close up, it's fantastic. But the minute you want to film somebody else, um, you lose that audio and then you have to pick it up again in post and it's really difficult. Um, we do have a mic for it, but more on that in a minute. But even with the built-in mic, it's not amazing. So. Yeah, that is camera number one. Uh, it will shoot in 4K. It does uh, 1080 at 60 frames per second. I think the slow-mo mode might be 120 frames per second. But So, you know, it's got a lot of capabilities. It's got a little screen on there that you can look at while you're filming. So, yeah, great. Oh, there is a, a new version of that, I know, the Osmo Pocket 2. And if you're looking at buying that and you can afford to upgrade, based on the specs that I've seen, the 2 looks pretty good. And if I was to get a new camera now uh, at an entry level, I'd probably go with the Osmo Pocket 2, if I'm honest. Right, the next one I want to talk about is the GoPro. Uh, this is the GoPro Hero 8. Uh, fantastic little camera. The 9 is now out. Um, I think the 9 might be a little bit better, I'm not sure. Uh, we use this for all of our like driving shots, so you just whack it on a, a mount in the on the windscreen, you know that bit of glass in the front of your van. Uh, you just whack it on there and just drive and it just films. Right. See, I'm rambling already. Uh, the reason I'm rambling is because I want to tell you as much as I can, but I don't want this video to be massively long, so apologies in advance if it's all a bit of a... But yeah. So anyway, Hero 8. 
Uh, the biggest pro for us with this is you can just plonk this thing anywhere. There's so many different mounts and accessories and things you can buy to put it on that you can just literally, I mean, you've seen Emily put it in a washing machine, we put it in cupboards, we put it in the fridge. Um, we use it for drive-by shots, walk-by shots. Um, it's really handy uh, to set up. Um, you just literally plonk it down and go. Uh, another great big pro of this is it's really easy to use. So you can literally just, once you've got your settings in there, just turn it on and go. You haven't got to worry about focusing or anything like that. It is so simple to use. Um, but there are a few cons, as there are with all of these cameras. So the biggest con for me is straight out the box, when you get it, the image is well, it's way too sharp and it's way too saturated. It is like wall GoPro. Um, so you do need to tweak it, in my opinion, when you first get it to tone some of that down. Um, but apart from that, um, it's pretty good. The colour is off, so I um, colour match, colour correct and then colour grade some of my footage. This is really hard to match up with the DJI stuff. So the DJI stuff, you could shoot in a cine-like profile. You put this in its flat profile, which I find them quite tricky to match. So that is a big con for me. But most of you guys won't be worrying about that yet. Um, but if you are worrying about that, you can buy the Osmo Action, uh, which will much better match up to your other DJI stuff if you go down the DJI route. Um, but yeah, get yourself a GoPro, waterproof, fantastic. Um, we stick cars on the dog and send him in the sea. Yeah, brilliant little camera. Um, Right, the next one, the big one, the one that everyone asks about, this is, I'm gonna move my tea out of the way because a lot of you will know what happened to the last drone and I can't afford a new one if I cock this one up. Uh, so this is the Mavic Air, the DJI Mavic Air 2. Um, the drone we had before this, uh, which a lot of you have asked about, that was the Mavic Air, so the original version of this drone. Uh, I'm gonna say this one, the Mavic Air 2, is a massive step up. Um, it's much easier to fly, it's much more stable, uh, the colour is a lot better. Uh, one of the problems I had with the original DJI was the, the colour, the, just the highlights would blow out all the time. Um, again, you've got your gimbal on the front, so your image, images are, your footage is really stabilised. Um, loving this drone, so uh, compared to our last drone, I'm only seeing pros with it so far, except for one, which is the price, it's not cheap. Um, but it's fantastic, I love it. So. Yeah, that's the drone. Uh, we're running out of room. Right, the final camera we use for vlogging is this. This is the Nikon, this is a DSLR, so it's a, a proper camera. It's a full frame sensor and it's the Nikon D750. Now, this camera, I bought this uh, a few years ago now for photography. I would not recommend this for vlogging as a vlogging camera at all, but a lot of you are asking, so I will include it. And then it is my main photography camera, so we will go into it a bit. Um, so I use this for the more cinematic shots where you've got that depth of field where there's uh, so depth of field you've got something in focus in the foreground and then everything after that is out of focus and blurred so it really brings your subject into the foreground. Um, the problem with this camera for vlogging is it doesn't have um, image stabilisation. Um, the audio is absolutely awful even with an external mic it's pretty much unusable. Um, it's big, it's heavy, it's bulky and when you start putting like big lenses on it all of a sudden you've got yourself a a huge setup to be carrying around um, but the pros for it for video um, on this one like I say I've got that full frame sensor so the depth of field is fantastic um, the color that this comes up with is amazing uh, the dynamic range that you get out of this is brilliant so um, it picks up loads of information in the shadows and loads of information in the highlights and I love the video that comes out of it it's just really hard to film with um, but photography wise if you're looking for a camera for photography this is absolutely uh, fantastic, I love it. And again, it's for the same reasons, it's the dynamic range, the color, um, it's low light capability, it's brilliant in low light. Um, and I'd much rather be filming this tube, this uh, video on this camera, but I can't because the audio is so bad. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the camera. Um, and then the lens that we mostly, or the only lens we really use with it for filming really is this. This is a Tamron uh, 24 to 70. Uh, and it's there's two versions of this lens. This is the USB G2, so and it's 2.8 uh, aperture 2.8. Uh, brilliant lens for photography and for film. And all of our shots on Instagram lately have been taken with this lens as well. Uh, mostly because we're out and about. So when I'm carrying all that and the drone, I can't carry too many of my other lenses. Um, but yeah, but again, this is heavy. I think this and this together, they're like two kilos or something. So it's a heavy setup to carry around. But it is. Photography is absolutely fantastic and we do use it for vlogging, but like I say, I wouldn't recommend it for vlogging. If you're looking for uh, a DSLR type camera or something with a big sensor, 
um, I'd look now uh, at a mirrorless system and I'd probably look to go uh, Sony and my dream camera would be the A7S III but unfortunately there's no way I can afford that at the moment so we're going to stick with these for a while see how we get on um, but yeah definitely look at mirrorless and do your research on brands because the issue I'm going to have going forward is all my lenses all my kit is Nikon and if I now go Sony I now need to get all new lenses and decent lenses aren't cheap so bear that in mind when you're looking uh, if you're just starting out I'd get yourself either the GoPro or the uh, Osmo Pocket get used to them first get used to the film inside of it before you even think about getting a big camera because you might decide that you need different things like now I want 120 frames per second so um, this will only shoot up to 60 um, but for when I was buying it for photography that didn't matter so take your time uh, and buy the right kit first time round um, so the next lens we'll talk about is the Beast. Uh, I call this the Bigma. Uh, this is a Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter, and this is uh, the C version or contemporary version. They make this lens in a sport as well, which is more expensive and heavier. Um, this is what I use for all of my wildlife photography. Uh, these days paired up with this, um, but if you are looking at the images on my wildlife Instagram, which I'll pop up here and I'll put a link to below, a lot of these were taken on a D3400, which is the camera that I'm filming all these little close-up shots down here somewhere um, with. Uh, the D3400 was my first ever camera. It's a fantastic learning camera, um, but again, it's not for vlogging. It doesn't take an external mic at all, so you're stuck with the built-in audio, which is rubbish. Um, but for wildlife photography, for a learner, with this lens, it was absolutely brilliant, um, and it is a crop sensor which means when you pair it up with this lens, you get a bit more reach. So kind of, it's a bit tricky, but yeah, you can, it will feel like you're taking your photo closer to the subject. Um, so yeah, but I can highly recommend, recommend this lens for wildlife. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, when I bought it, it was expensive. It was about 750, 800 pounds. I think now they're much, 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 much cheaper. And it, in my opinion, it's comparable to the Nikon uh, 200 to 500 lens. Um, if you want to go, better than that you've got to start looking at 500 millimeter prime and then you're talking thousands of pounds so the yeah, fantastic lens oh the lens that's on the d3400 at the minute is the nikon 50 millimeter prime which is a relatively cheap lens i think it's about 150 180 quid or it was when i bought it and that's brilliant for photography as well so if you're starting out just in photography the 3400 nikon d3400 and the 50 mil lens are fantastic but they are limited for vlogging you couldn't really use that camera for vlogging to be fair um also, you're going to want something with a flip round screen and neither of my DSLRs have a flip round screen. So if you are doing pieces of the camera, you can't see what you're filming. So a, a screen that goes both ways is a massive bonus. Um, right, this lens, this is my macro lens. This is a Sigma 105mm. Um, I don't use it that often. I've not used it for film yet. I shouldn't really, but I'm going to give it a go uh, and see if we can produce something uh, funky with this. Uh, but for those that have asked about the bug shots, the uh, ladybirds, um, flies, eyes and things like that, really good lens. Again, it's not top of the range, it's um, a fair, It's not cheap, but they call it a budget version. Uh, but for macro photography, I find it really, really good. So that is the lens I'm using for that. Uh, so I think that's everything on camera gear. Uh, bear in mind that a lot of my shots I do, I will colour grade my footage. Uh, so. When I first started buying cameras, I was, I'd go out and buy the camera, I'd take the picture and it would look nothing like the sample images that I'd seen. And that's because they're edited or colour graded if it's film, um, which I do with mine. So that is a, a different learning curve. But as starter cameras, uh, the DJI, the GoPro and the, and the uh, drone, that in its H, as HDR mode, the colour that it comes out with HDR mode is fantastic on its own. You don't need to colour grade. But if you are comparing it directly to mine, I do colour grade my drone shots. So... They might not be exactly the same, but that's a process you can learn at a later date. Right, so that's covered the cameras that we use. Um, I know I haven't gone into detail much about each one, but there just isn't time in this video to get all of that in. So, yeah, next, well, I'm going to finish my coffee because it's getting cold, and then we'll have a look at accessories. So these are just the, the basic accessories that we use. Ah drone away shall we sorry old dronio but you're not going to be going out for a while uh, i don't know if i said but if you don't want to spend this much money on a drone um, i've had a look at the mavic mini uh, the mavic mini 2 and the specs on that look really really good for an entry-level drone so i haven't used it i can't recommend it but um 
yeah, they do look pretty good for a, you know a decent start of drone. Right, accessories. Now we've got absolutely thousands of camera accessories. I'm a bit of an addict, especially with tripods and things. But I'm just going to go through a few basic ones that I think you're going to need. Now the first one being some sort of external mic. Uh, this is the Rode. I think it's called the Rode Micro Go Mini Go or something. I'll put a link in the description. Um, it's okay. It does produce better audio than most of the in-camera audio from the, the filming equipment. Uh, it's not amazing. Uh, this thing on it's called a dead cat, and that, that really does help with uh, wind noise. Um, but that's what we're using at the moment. I'm hoping to upgrade soon, but as again, as a starter, external mic is pretty good. Um, if you're going to buy it with the Osmo Pocket, you'll need to buy a little adapter for it so that you can plug it in. Um, I don't know about the new Osmo Pocket. Uh, this is a Joby tripod. Um, now, we only use the Joby tripod for the small cameras, so the Osmo will go on this, the GoPro will go on this. Um, I don't think I'd use a Joby for my big camera because I've seen some really bad uh, things happen with the Joby. So my big camera always goes on a proper tripod. Um, but this is brilliant for the little stuff. And I did buy a few cheap ones of these uh, when we first started from Amazon and every single one of them, the legs ended up breaking. So this is a bit more expensive, but it's been far, far better than the ones we had before. Um, then you've got various different other GoPro mounts. So I like this one. This one's from GoPro itself. Uh, it's a little clip-on mount. Uh, so you just clip that onto whatever you want to stick it to. It's also magnetic, so you can just plonk it on the side of things. And then the mount on top, that twists. Um, your GoPro just goes on there. Again, this is GoPro, branded GoPro. Again, I've had all the cheap ones, and I still use some of the cheap ones. The next thing I'm going to show you is uh, one of the cheap ones, but the cheap ones tend to break really quickly. Um, so the GoPro, if you've got it in a case, it's fairly robust, but it can be a right pain, uh, especially when you're trying to fit it to a vehicle and then drive if it's not going to hold out. Um, I actually smashed my first GoPro because of cheap stuff, so that's why. Uh, the next one is a suction mount. Again, these are brilliant because you can stick these anywhere and you, the range, you can move that bit round, you can move that bit round. Um, and this is what we use in the van uh, when we're either filming ourselves driving or when we're filming the, the road. So I really like these suction mount ones. Um, all kinds of different mounts for the GoPro, We've got different mounts for the Osmo. The Osmo, bear in mind, is a, the pocket is a bit harder to mount on things. Um, it's a bit of a pain in the bum, actually, so that is where the GoPro just kicks the arse out of the pocket. It's just much easier to put anywhere. Um, then filters, a lot of people neglect filters. Uh, so these are this is a set of ND filters for the Osmo. I've got another set of these for the um, drone, um, and I'm gonna get a set for the GoPro. And basically all this does is it lets in less light. So when you're filming uh, in the middle of the day, which if you're doing travel vlogs, sometimes you have to do, uh, this just helps you get better exposure. And when you start to get more into film, you'll wanna set your shutter speed uh, relevant to your frame rate. And if you don't have ND filters, you can't do that and you'll end up with visibly jolty footage to anyone that's you know filmed anything for any period of time you'll start to see it so yeah like the nd filters and you also you pick up more color with these uh, and then for the big camera i have this one uh, and this is a similar sort of thing but it's called a variable nd filter uh, you'll need to buy the right size uh, filter to go on whatever lens you're using but basically all this does is once it's on the camera you turn it and then it'll switch so this one goes up to ND 128 I think so when you're filming you can just adjust it on camera for the light to make sure you can maintain the correct uh, shutter speed so that's about it I think that's the the basics um, like I say I'll leave as many links as I can find to all this stuff in the video description um, if you have any further questions then don't be afraid to drop those in the comments and ask but yeah a couple of other things I wanted to talk about now are editing software we get asked about our editing software so many times. Um, I use a program called DaVinci Resolve. It is completely free and it is completely brilliant, but it is not for everyone. So, but it's very power hungry. So you will need a decent machine to be able to run it. Um, the only reason I use DaVinci Resolve is because I like to color grade um, and DaVinci Resolve easily has, in my opinion, uh, the, the best capabilities uh, for color grading. But if you don't want to go down the road of DaVinci Resolve, there's so many other uh, softwares out there that you can use. Uh, Final Cut Pro, the Adobe stuff's good, Premiere, Premiere Pro and whatnot, uh, fantastic software. I have used them in the past, but I just wanted to do everything under one software and learn it once, because that's the other thing. If you start on one and then change, you've got to relearn all the all the stuff. But DaVinci Resolve is 
very power intensive so bear that in mind before you start using it but it is fantastic i love it and i wouldn't edit in anything else now um i will only unless they bring out something amazing but i will only use uh, davinci resolve so that's the editing software like i say completely free give it a go see if your system can handle it but the minute you start trying to import uh, footage in 4k or 60 frames per second it really does struggle so a uh, quick tip on that you could um, optimize your media which i still do sometimes at 4k uh, and that basically means you downgrade the version of your footage while you're editing and then when you export it it upgrades it to a better quality again and you get the original uh, quality footage coming out but it does help with the edit so look into that if you're struggling and you can also do that in other programs that's not just davinci for photo editing we use um, adobe lightroom so i do all my initial edits in lightroom uh, sometimes I'll then take it into Photoshop if there's anything I want to do, like remove artifacts or anything in there that's just iffy. Um, again, Photoshop, very steep learning curve in Photoshop, but for most edits, if you get it right in camera and you're happy with the composition, you can do everything you need to do in Lightroom. And you don't need to do it all on the computer. The Lightroom, oh, I really like the um, Lightroom mobile app. So if you're taking pictures on your smartphone, just edit them straight in the mobile app and you can get some brilliant results. A lot of our Instagram stuff is just taken on the phone, edited in the Lightroom app and then whacked up on social media because for social media you don't need great big massive file sizes. You're not going to be printing those out. Uh, I don't know if you can tell but I am talked out but there's one more thing that you guys all ask about and that is music. We get our music from Epidemic Sound. Uh, you do have to pay for it. It's £10, I think it's £10 a month. Uh, but what it means is you can use those songs in your YouTube videos uh, and they sort out all the copyright stuff for you. So I've never had an issue yet of using an epidemic soundtrack in a YouTube issue and getting a copyright strike. So, yeah, if you want good music, I found if you want good music, you need to pay for a subscription service, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but if your channel, if you're looking to build a channel that you want to grow, then you're going to need to invest in it at some point. So music and music is huge, especially for us in our vlogs. Music is like half the vlog um it's massive in the vlogs uh, we did used to use a free uh music tool so i used to use uh youtube youtube music library um and that is a free source of music and all the build videos or right up until nearly the end were all the music was all sourced from youtube music library so you will find it in there it's not amazing but it's music you can use that it. It doesn't have copyright issues so definitely worth a shout especially like i say especially if you're starting out if you're starting out i think you should just Go with the simple, go with the cheap and just get used to doing it because there's a lot to it and then then make your upgrades and then pick out your big cameras from there. But yeah, that's about it really. Um, like I say, I'm sorry about the setup we're sat in. I've got no light in this house. I'm not allowed outside at the minute so I can't film it outside. Um, it's dark, dingy, miserable outside so there's no natural light coming in whatsoever. Uh, so I'm having to use a light over there. I don't have proper lighting. Uh, we're not those kind of vloggers. Um, so it is just shining right in my face, giving me quite a headache. But yeah, I know a lot of you probably haven't stuck around to the end of this video because camera stuff isn't really your thing. If you have, then thank you very much. Um, it means the world. If you did find this video interesting, uh, then please let me know in the comments because uh, I get asked, I'm getting asked quite a lot now to make specific videos with regards to the vlog inside of it. It's not something I've ever considered, um, but if there's enough people that you know want to see that, I don't mind sitting down like this. And making these videos they're never going to be mind-blowing epic videos they're just going to be uh just basic thoughts and hints tips and tricks and whatever but yeah let us know in the comments like i said if you've got any questions about this that we've covered drop that in the comments i will do my best to answer every single one of them um or emily will but i can't guarantee that that'll be a sensible answer um yeah and give this video a thumbs up hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because our travel videos are much better than this video that i've just made about our camera gear and we will see you well, me, I will see you on Sunday, back with Emily, where she belongs in the video. Life is a winding road, no telling where it goes.